Today's interview is with Jim Caldwell. He has lost over 180 pounds using OMAD. All right, well, thank you for being on the show today, Jim. Uh, why don't you give everybody kind of a little introduction. What do you do? What do I do? Well, uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Jim Caldwell. Uh, I'm a design engineer. Uh, I live in the uh, Chicago suburbs, and uh, I'm 59 years old, and uh, I'm on here this morning to talk about, I think I have a pretty exceptional weight loss story, and uh, I'm hoping to get into that and share it with people. So what, give us a little rundown of how you're finding success with weight loss, like how much have you lost, and how long did it take, and what are you doing? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give you kind of the broad parameters. Um, uh, I call it my weight loss journey. Uh, it started 25 months ago, uh, so two years plus one month. Um, and when I started this journey, I weighed, uh, my highest known weight was 352 pounds. And um, so I had a huge weight problem and had had one for a long time. Uh, this morning, I weighed. I, of course, I weigh every day. <laughs> um, I weigh 164 pounds. So I've lost uh, 188 pounds total, which means I've lost more weight uh, than uh, I, I'm right now this body contains. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, extreme. Um, some other facts. Uh, I lost 90% of that weight in the first 13 months. And, uh, yeah, and, and over the past year, I have continued to drift down another 18 pounds. Uh, but most of that was in the beginning part of the year. I've been kind of stable and, and just maintaining for about the past four or five months. I've just been floating within like a five pound range, which is fine. Uh, so I'm kind of really solidly in maintenance now. I'm not trying to lose weight. Um, one other, I think, little tidbit is I lost Within the first six months, I lost a hundred pounds, and I didn't do any exercise. It was just diet. So, those wow. are some of little little uh, little tidbits. Um, and and how I how I found the success, just in general broad strokes, two key things. Um, and number one is is OMAD one meal a day. That was something I found. Uh, in addition to also, I did in the beginning, I did some uh, extended fasting, some longer uh, multi-day fasts, uh, but then kicked right off into OMAD, and I never looked back. OMAD just kind of really changed my life. Mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the same time uh, that I went to OMAD, I also uh, changed my diet, and I just kind of did some simple things that I thought made sense. I, I, I stepped away from sugar and uh, processed foods and high carb foods and just stuck with whole natural foods, you know, just, you know, vegetables and fruit and, and meat and things like that, simple foods. And those two things combined were just like magic and, uh, and, and it got me going. Um, after the six months, I said I didn't do any exercise. Uh, after the six months, I started to feel good and I was lighter and I started walking and then walking went to jogging and then running and then I became an avid runner. And, and so now running is part of my life. I've done a lot of running, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, that has helped to kind of, uh, kind of body recomposition, if you will. Like I've kind of changed my body shape uh, due to the running and it did help with the weight loss too. But I just stressed that it wasn't the thing that got, you know, it, it wasn't required in the beginning to get the weight loss going. It was mainly the OMAD and diet. Right, right. I think that's that's a mistake a lot of people make is they think, well, if I just start moving, it's going to fall off. And I just didn't find that either. I tried and it just didn't seem to help. Yeah, I mean, every other time in my life I tried to lose weight, I started with the exercise. I thought that's what you did and it didn't mm -hmm. work for me ever. Uh, so. Makes you hungrier, maybe. I don't know. There's something. Oh, it did for me. Yeah, I was hungry. <laughs> so why don't you, do you have a daily routine or is, is your day kind of varied? How, how does that look for you? I, yeah, yeah, I do have a daily routine and I'm pretty regimented. Uh, 
And it's more or less the same now as it was. I consider I was in weight loss mode, let's say for the 13 months. And now I'm, I don't consider myself in weight loss mode anymore. I'm just in sustaining mode, but my routine is pretty much the, the same. Uh, and I get up and, and you'll like this. The first thing I do is I jump on the scale. I'm, I'm aware. I mean, I weigh every morning and I record it and I put it in an Excel spreadsheet and I track uh, how much I've lost in the, uh, in the past seven days, the past 15 days, the past month. I got a seven day moving average. I got graphs. I'm a data person like you are. So I appreciate uh, your sight because uh, a lot of people aren't like that. They don't like to know, but I wanted to face it, you know, so I weigh every day in the morning. Uh, then, uh, you know, my routine is pretty simple. Um, I, I head off to work and I, I grab a coffee and, uh, now I have coffee with heavy whipping cream in it. And that's, that's my breakfast, uh, let's say. That gets mm -hmm. me through lunchtime. Uh, at that point, I have another coffee uh, mm -hmm. with heavy whipping cream. And there's no snacking, no eating, no nothing, just the two coffees. And that's, that's my day uh, other than eating. So I get home from work roughly, let's say, uh, a quarter of five. And so I'm fully fasted. Like I'm one day fasted. I haven't eaten. And that's when I exercise. I go typically, I get home and I go for a run. And I like, I, I like to exercise when I'm fasted. So I do mm -hmm. my run at that point. That takes me about an hour. Then I shower up and then I'm ready to eat. Uh, so I, I eat roughly 6 p.m. every day. And, um, <clears throat> and you know, there's a, always a question when you talk about OMAD or intermittent fasting, like what's your window? Uh, there, there, my window is when the food is ready, I start eating and the window closes when I'm full. And that's, that's the end of my window. I don't right. eat after that or before that. My window, and it, so that takes me, I mean, I try to eat slow. I try not to really gobble it in. I try to be mindful of what I'm eating. But even if you stretch it out, it's like 40 minutes or even if it's taking me something to prepare a while, an hour maximum. So. <laughs> Anyway, there's, you know, you've probably heard this question many times. Oh, you know, how do you manage your window? I don't manage my window. It's just right. I start eating and then when I'm full, I stop. End of story. Right, exactly. But that, that's my routine, uh, and I do the same thing every day. So what about a little backstory? Have you always had trouble with your weight or, you know, like was it a childhood thing or an adulthood thing? Uh. It came on as an adult. As a child, uh, I didn't really have a weight issue. Uh, you know, I was in good, I was, uh, played three sports in high school and everything. I was really fit. Uh, but as I got into adulthood, I became more sedentary and adopted bad eating habits and just, I've got to say all my life, I've never been a person very disciplined about my diet or my body. I didn't take good care of myself. I'm just honest. A lot of people do, uh, and, and they're able to, you know, manage it a lot better, but I didn't do a good job at it. Um, but so I tended to drift up in weight. And when I was younger, though, um, I was able to control it a little bit. I could, if I really put my mind to it, I could lose some weight. Uh, but I was never able to keep it off. I never had a good system, you know, a stable system that would last. You know, I might be successful for a matter of months. But then I'd go back to my old habits and regain it. <clears throat> the thing is, as time wore on, as the years went by, it became harder and harder to lose weight. And I'll, I'll be honest, uh, somewhere in my 50s, I gave up. I thought there's just no way I can lose weight anymore. I just, I didn't know what it was, but uh, I couldn't lose more than a few pounds. And it just was so hard. I was just resigned to being fat, you know, pretty much my life and that it would probably reduce my life, uh, you know, because there's no real old, real heavy people. You know, you kind of it drags you down in one way or the other. Mm. So I'd given up um, and always struggled with it. Uh, and I would just say. Looking back on it now, I realize reflecting on my life that I had what I would characterize probably as like food addiction, uh, mm -hmm. and I 
I didn't think so at the time, but I, I think I do have a food addiction. I was like addicted to things like sweet things like Cokes. I had to have Coke every day. I was having four or five or six Cokes and so sweets and snack foods and, 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 you know, donuts. And that's, I was just, you know, that was really too uh, large a part of my diet. And uh, mm-hmm. so I think I didn't take care of myself and got, into like a food addiction type of environment and that just uh, dragged me down. Right. Well, was there ever a plan that maybe like worked for you, but then it just, it just didn't end up like you couldn't sustain it or maybe just a plan that you tried that was like just a complete failure? Well, yeah, I failed every time. I did, I never tried like a plan, like a, let's say a name brand plan, like a Weight Watchers or a, mm-hmm. Uh, Nutrisystem or whatever the, the, the name brand plans are. I'm not really a kind of person to follow someone else's plan. I've got to do my own thing. You know, I, I like to read everything and study everything, but then figure out what I'm going to do myself. I'm very stubborn like that. I, I try right. my own. So, you know, always when I tried to jump into uh, weight loss in the past, what I found is I, through my research, I would see a lot of people, very educated people, seemingly very intelligent, describe it as a simple matter. It's an equation. It's uh, calories in, calories out. Uh, and, and depending on which is higher, it results either in weight loss or weight gain. Mm-hmm. And me being, uh, me being an engineer and kind of logically inclined, I was drawn to that. That made sense. You know, it seemed... Okay, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, it's energy. I never really delved into it to see is that accurate or not, or is it really, you know, there's no way to prove it. It just seemed that I was surrounded with that. I mean, that's when you look into the scientific explanation or any kind of a book, it says it's calories in, calories out, and always the emphasis on calories. And so my approach would be, okay, I'm bright. I know the equations. Uh, I'm going to maximize that in my favor to lose weight. I'm going to boost the calories out through the ceiling by working my butt off, by running and lifting and, and just charging hard, sweating. And I'm going to minimize the my food intake, uh, you know, as much as possible at the same time. So, okay, I'm going to have a deficit and I can almost calculate my weight loss because of this equation. And, um, and I'm going to do the other things they recommend, which is always, you know, eat low fat because that, you know, fat is just... Uh, you know, it contains more calories than carbs, so just eat, and eat often, eat, uh, you know, five, six times a day because it revs up your metabolism. So all these, th- these were kind of the things I absorbed from just, you know, paying attention, and these are the things that got me so frustrated. I mean, it, it would succeed for a while. You Initially, maybe weeks or a few months, there would be some success, and you're losing, and you think, oh, okay, it's working. But then inevitably, each time there'd be like a, a stall and then just work harder. You know, I just come back, well, I guess I got to go harder. And so you start more working out and reducing your calories. And then it just comes to a point each time when it's just frustrating and you're hungry. And you realize, I can't keep doing this. You know? And right. and, you, and then, so I would just say, what is wrong with me? I, you know, maybe... I mean, you'll laugh at this, but I, I started to think, I read somewhere somebody said that if you carry a lot of extra weight for a long enough time, that fat kind of crystallizes or it transforms or it becomes impervious to change. You can't lose it. Mm. And so that's, I thought, I can't lose this weight anymore. You know, it's, I'm stuck with it. You know, I was coming up with all these excuses, but bottom line, the excuse was for me to go back and just not care anymore. You know, I would just say, well, I tried as hard as I could for, you know, four months, five months or whatever. <clears throat> Maybe I lost 20, 30 pounds, but that was all I could do. And then I would just throw in the towel and then go back to living, uh, you know, just not caring anymore or just right. giving up hope. So that that's how I pretty much... That was all my prior weight loss story ended up like that. So this go around, what what has been different? You know, is it mostly mindset or do you feel like it was just the diet, you know, the, 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 the changes you made in your actual diet or was it, you know, a combination? What was that like for you? It was, this time was strange. Uh, 
it was different, but it kind of evolved. Like I said, I, I had given up and I don't know what changed in me, but a couple of years ago, uh, it was like late August. I just, for whatever reason, maybe desperation, I thought, uh, you know, I, I should try losing weight again. And I don't really know. I didn't have a plan. It wasn't like I woke up one day and said, darn it, Jim, you know, we got to attack this and, and you're going to do this plan. And, you're gonna, you know, it wasn't like that at all. It was just like, okay, let's try. And I went for the first, the first four or five weeks of this latest weight loss journey. I did the same thing I always did. Reduce. Uh, I didn't exercise because I was too heavy to exercise at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I reduced my caloric intake. This is what I knew. I also started to reduce carbs because I had somewhere along the road, I had read the, the, the Atkins diet book in mm -hmm. the uh, induction phase where you uh, eliminate carbs. And so I was doing that. I was just first I cut my food in half and then my core. I was trying to see what's the minimum amount I can eat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, I had no plan. And I, to be honest, I had no real expectation to succeed. I was just trying it, maybe out of desperation. Mm. I reached a point somewhere around four or five weeks, and I realized, again, this is not going to work. I was hungry. Uh, I was frustrated. And I knew it wasn't sustainable, number one. But I didn't give up. I, I just, I was just challenging myself. And I remember one morning, it was a Saturday morning, I was just laying in bed thinking, what, what am I going to do? I mean, I did lose a little weight with, with that, with cutting, you know, I had lost, I think, you know, maybe 15 pounds or a little more. So there mm -hmm. was some progress, which is to me, that was like a small dent in my weight loss. I mean, it's not like anybody noticed, but I, I didn't want to lose what I, what I gained there. So I thought, what am I going to do next? And this is when I came up with a harebrained idea. I thought, well, I'm just going to not eat today, you know, or I'm going to see, I'm going to see if I can not eat today. This was a mm -hmm. Saturday working. I'm going to try eating no food. Um, <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't have a plan, but um, I ended up being able to fast for the day. You know, I had waves of hunger coming on, but I was able to fight it off. And I got into the next day, Sunday, and uh, said, oh, gosh, you know, I made it. Let's try another day. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so I fasted on Sunday. And then I noticed this pattern where the hunger would come like in a wave. It would hit, you know, certain times of day and it would hit hard and it would, you just, you'd think, Oh, I got to eat. But if you, if you ride it out, uh, and, and just resist, it eventually subsides and you just kind of feel okay. You kind of feel normal. You know, you feel a little mm -hmm. empty light, but it's not that bad. So I'm riding along and then I start Monday. I go back to work and. All along, I'm thinking at some point I got to start eating. I don't, I can't just function without eating. Uh, but I, uh, I, when I got to work, it started getting better. I'm into the third day, and I started noticing I was having good days at work. I was thinking real clearly. Mm -hmm. I had good energy. I had this sharp mental focus. So it's like the fog was lifting, you know. And basically, the hunger started going away. I didn't have those those surges of hunger. It's just mm -hmm. a kind of an empty. You kind of feel there's. I call it like a buzz. Your your body when when you get deeper into a fast, it's just kind of like a buzz going on. You know, your body's doing something different. It's operating in a different way. So, and and mind you, every day I was dropping about two to three pounds a day. You know, wow. so. So that was like, okay, you know, that was, that was helping motivate me to, to pile on the days because I was doing, I was performing well at work. I was in this clear mind and uh, the weight's falling off. Now, I didn't know where I was going to go with all this, you know, but I was just on this journey. Um, right. But I started really thinking, I got to, I got to learn more about fasting. I got to learn, I got to learn if I'm doing it right or, you know, you know, I didn't want to, you know, screw myself up too bad, you know, and uh, and I wanted to think about, well, how do I get out of this? You know, <laughs> how do I exit the fat? You know, I so I was doing a lot of research online, uh, uh, learning everything I could about fasting and intermittent fasting. And uh, I, I noticed I came across uh, 
a lot of people were talking about a book called The Obesity Code by mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Young. And a lot of people were, you know, there was kind of a buzz about this book, how it was so insightful and so helpful. And so I was drawn to that. I, I checked it out on Amazon. I saw, the, I read the little blurb and I said, oh, okay, kidney specialist from Toronto. What does he know? Anyway, mm -hmm. I downloaded that book and uh, I read it over like the next four nights. Uh, I think I read it a couple of times, uh, cover to cover. And it's during reading that book where everything changed for me. The, the, it was it was just like I I'm not exaggerating. There were like epiphany moments reading that book. Uh, I don't know if it was because I was fasting, I was in a clear state, and I was mm. super focused, or just the way uh, Dr. Fung writes. Uh, mm. He's very direct and very pointed, and it suddenly made sense to me. Mm. It it made sense to me why all my prior dietary uh, uh, changes failed. And he really convinced me that it was the fasting component. That was the missing missing ingredient in all diets is mm. people eat too often. You know, you, you've got to, you know, shrink, at least shrink the uh, the eating window. Right. And and that's when the, I said, you know, this is, I don't know. I felt, I felt motivated at this point. I kind of knew that I was reading something important and it mm. could be like I, i'll swear a few times i just had chills like it's like and, and i wanted to jump into intermittent fasting right away but i'm still on this fast and believe it or not kayla i got through i got through the first week and i was so confident i tacked on another week what said, i'm i'm gonna do another week because i lost all this weight right. and i was functioning and i thought i'm gonna I'll stop this after another. I'm going to do a two-week fast. And remember, I started this thinking, I'll try a one-day fast. and not even sure if I could do a one-day. So here I am. So I'm so I'm really starting to roll here now, and the lights are going on. And I'm going through the second week of a fast, and I'm planning my exit strategy. And after reading Dr. Fung's book, and I read a lot about intermittent fasting, what I was drawn towards was – Actually, his suggestion that he said he uses uh, OMAD uh, in his normal day. You know, he does that several times a week because it just works real busy during the day and not hungry for breakfast and just blows through lunch, you know, and not hungry and then just eats one meal at night with his family. And I said, you know, that kind of sounds like my day. I'm busy. Right. And I, would, I could just have one meal uh, at home. And that would work. And that's what I wanted to try. So I knew I wanted to try OMED once I was done with this fast. And I thought, well, what about food? You know, what am I going to eat? I can't go back to my old ways. And that's, I just did a little research and, like I said, came up with what I thought was common sense. Uh, I, I just got away from the sugar um, and high carb stuff and, uh, uh, and processed foods. I avoided everything with a package or a lot of ingredients, a lot of you know, man-made stuff. And I just said, you know, I'm going to eat, uh, you know, fresh meat, fresh vegetables, fresh food, uh, uh, leafy greens, a salad, you know, a, kind of a balanced meal, but all fresh. And so suddenly I had a plan and that's when everything changed. Uh, I ended the fast. It, it, I kind of crawled to the finish line of that fast. Uh, it Towards the end of the second week, it was like, it it wasn't like because of hunger, but it was because of a, I'll tell you, as it goes on, you feel a sense of deprivation. Like there's nothing, mm. food is such fun and such, it's, 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 it's a great pleasure and it hits your senses. It's a great sensory experience. And mm. I was not having anything fun in the day. <clears throat> so I don't know, I got to the finish line. I finished the two weeks. Uh, then I went right into my new plan, which was OMAD plus this new, what I call clean eating. And, and that was it, uh, uh, Kayla. Everything changed from that point on. After that fast, I told people this, and I mean it sincerely. I was never the same person after that point. Uh, and it, and if anybody wants to have one takeaway from my journey, it's, I think there's something unique about this process I went through. Uh, you know, I got, I prepared for fasting by, kind of eliminating and shrinking my food and getting away from sugar. 
And then I did that fast, and that fast was like a reset. It, it was like a reset, a total reset of my system, and it broke my cravings. I didn't have cravings anymore for sugar. I was able to do the OMAD like, like that. I mean, I didn't mm-hmm. stop with OMAD. Uh, and, and I'll be honest, the, the weight just started falling off. I mean, after the fast, there's like a recovery, like a week, you gain some weight. I gained like three or four pounds back mm-hmm. and stabilized, and then it just started dropping. And this went on weeks and months, I just losing weight with no exercise. And I just was smacking my head. How can it be this easy? <laughs> all the work I did to lose weight, and now I'm eating, and I'm enjoying my food, and I'm filled up. I eat. Those meals were like a feast. I mean, I was eating so much salad and vegetables. I, I would leave the table, and I'm like, oh, boy, I feel like Thanksgiving. But, and I'm losing weight. And so I was like, why does it? Why didn't I know about this? Why isn't this taught? And why, you know, so right. then I became, I just became interested to learn uh, everything I could. I, I've just taken a real interest in all this stuff after that. But that, that was the key part uh, uh, of my plan that I had no plan when I started. I had no direction. And then I came to OMAD and I started eating in a different way and, and the weight started coming off. I, Started adding later on. I added the exercise, as I said, and that was also very helpful. Um, and so my uh, what I learned is that that calorie equation, you know, anybody who's got a lot of weight to lose, focusing on calories is just not that productive. It's not like a plan. It's just it's much more important. It was for me to focus on what I was eating and when I was eating, how often I was eating. Those were right. like, those were. That was the switch that, that flipped on my weight loss. So that is a fantastic. I mean, that. I mean, so when you went to OMAD, do you do you recall how much weight were you dropping a week? Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, I think let's say for for the thirteen weeks, thirteen months, when I lost ninety percent of the weight, I think I averaged somewhere between three and four pounds a week. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Uh, I was tracking weekly, and uh, in the beginning, it was like four. There were there would go for periods where it was like four, four, four. It might drop a little bit to two, a little bit. I mean, there were there were some patterns in there. And I mm-hmm. should mention that a couple times uh, during that thirteen uh, month period, there was a leveling off. There was like a little plateauing. And mind mm-hmm. you, all this time, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm just waiting <laughs> for. I just, it can't be, it can't, I mean, this, I was just waiting for it to hit that roadblock that it just gets, yes. all right, that's it. it, you know, it's not going to go any further. But so when I saw my weight loss graph kind of tapering off and slowing down, I was like, no, I'm not stopping here. And, and you know what? I did a few, I did like two other longer fasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I saw tapering off, I would do another little, I did one. I did one five-day fast, and I did another day fast during that 13 months. And when I did those fasts, it did reignite the weight loss again, uh, not not just from the fast, but it uh, just when I go back to my OMAD, it started. It's like I use an analogy like, you know, your body, you know, what's Newton's law of motion? A body at rest tends to stay at rest. Right. And so my analogy is that, like, a a fat body tends to stay fat, you know, and, mm-hmm. and you got to, I, I equate it to like pushing the big boulder up the hill, you know, mm-hmm. you, you push hard, push hard, push hard. But once you're at the top of the hill, one more little push and it starts rolling. And so sometimes the plateaus, you know, the, the boulder would roll down and kind of level off on a plateau. Well, I'd have to go down and roll that boulder off, you know, up off the cliff again and get it mm-hmm. re That's, that's, Seemed to be what happened. After I'd give another push with the fasting, it would reignite. So um, how much I lost per week? Uh, yeah. Right. So there were there were times, you know, I think overall it was somewhere around four. Uh, but, um, you know, sometimes two, sometimes five. I'll say this. I went for a real long stretch. I'm going to say four or five months when the worst result of my daily weigh-in was 
that it stayed the same. Mm-hmm. I never had a gain, you know, I almost always had some fraction of a pound loss. And right. the worst situation was that it was the same as the day before, and that was kind of rare. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it it was powerful stuff. I mean, it was yeah. just, what, once I got that, that ball rolling, uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. What are some challenges that you still face? Or do you face any challenges still? Well, you know, uh, this year I've been, you know, kind of in semi-maintenance. Uh, you know, I, I had a goal. I wanted to be under 180 pounds. That was my original goal. You know, mm-hmm. people kept asking me what my goal is. So I didn't have a goal in the beginning, so I, I threw up this 180 pounds. Because uh, that was a weight I knew I was at in high school, so I wanted to be under my high school weight. And I figured, wouldn't that be great to be erase all of my excess weight from adulthood, which had been accumulating for decades, and go back to high school? So I set that 180. Uh, as I got close to 180, though, and realized I was going to break that goal, I realized 180 wasn't enough because things had changed since high school. I didn't carry the same muscle anymore as high school. I mean, high school, I was, I played, as I mentioned, sports uh, a lot and I had more muscle. I didn't have that muscle anymore. Years of sedentary lifestyle, uh, hidden under fat, you, you think, okay, there's a lot of muscle there. There really isn't, uh, you know, when you're sedentary. Uh, so I lowered my goal a little bit is the point I'm getting to. After 180, I said, no, nah. I had in mind that I wanted to be maybe in the mid-160s to settle in the mm-hmm. final. I figured that would be my 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 final zone. And so that was my challenge uh, last year. And that, that that came to be uh, without a lot of effort. I, I did reach the zone, and I've, I've been maintaining in there. Like I said this morning, I'm 164. Um, one, one thing that was a challenge, I was a little concerned. Uh, I, I tend to be at home a lot, and I got everything under control. You know, I have my food, and, and I have my system and routine. But on the road or traveling or at special events or – uh, vacations or around other people, you know, the workplace or, or uh, work, uh, work function dinners or whatever, you know, how, how was I going to handle that? You know, would it be an issue? Would I go off the rails and would I go back to bad habits? You know, I, and believe me, I'm super sensitive about not failing this time because uh, where I was, and, mm-hmm. and I mentioned this in the beginning, I totally given up and mm-hmm. thought I would never be thin again, uh, or, or 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 happy. And uh, and now that I've achieved that, there's just no way that it's. I, I tell myself many times as I was approaching my goal, I said, Jim, this is a one way ticket. You're you're mm-hmm. not going back. There's going to be no rebound, you know. So I am super focused on maintenance and that it. People think I'm a little bit too, you know, you know, why don't you loosen up a little bit or whatever? I, I don't. I'm 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 really sensitive about maintaining. So what I found this year, uh, I did I did a lot of travel this year and it did prevent present some surprises and uh and some challenges, but uh um I did overcome them. Uh one thing one thing, even though I'm very regimented in what I eat, um I don't rule out anything. Uh, mm. I everything's fair game for me. I mean, I I and I if I want pizza, I'll have pizza. Uh, or if I want to share a dessert with somebody, or uh, I, I everything is nothing is off the table for me. It's just that most likely I'm not going to do that very often, and I'm fine mm. with that. But I'm I, I don't like having. I don't want to plant a seed in my mind that. Uh, you know, I can never have pizza again, you know, or I can right. never do this again. I don't want to have that mindset of restriction because it, once you do that, it kind of gnaws away at you. It's like, right. you know, you're driven. You got to have pizza. No, right. sometimes I go off and I celebrate a little bit and I, and I eat a bunch of stuff that I normally won't have, but then I walk away and I go right back to my routine. So, and that feels good to have that kind of control. So mm-hmm. anyway, that was a challenge this year. I, I realized, okay, I can function traveling, uh, you know, and, uh, and I got to do some different things to get the kind of food I eat, but it's no problem. Uh, so 
It's not really a challenge. I mean, honestly, maintaining is my challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not hard right now. I mean, it's just kind of naturally flowing. I, I'm still on OMAD. Um, right. And I don't vary that much. So it's just, it is what it is. I just kind of maintain weight. But I watch it real closely, and I'm going to always have that challenge. I guess... Is a, I don't know if you call it a challenge or a goal. I do have a fitness goals or, or fitness challenges. I want to keep pursuing better fitness. I mean, I've come mm -hmm. a long way. Uh, I mean, I was I couldn't climb a flight of stairs without breaking into a sweat uh, right. when it started. Now, in the past year, I've run two half marathons. I've done three five Ks. I can run. I mean, I'm. I'm, my speed is increasing all the time. I'm I'm really pretty darn fit. Um, That's awesome. But I need to work on something. There's two areas I want to work on: the strength. I want to, to build more strength and uh, flexibility. I need to work on that. You know, as you age, those are things that uh, really are important. So, uh, that's really my main challenge: is to maintain weight and, and improve my fitness. Well, is there one lesson, one big lesson that you learned during this journey that you want other people to kind of get, you know, while they're on their journey? Oh, yeah. Well, probably several lessons. I mean, I, just to reiterate a little bit, um, one lesson would be that how often you eat is really important. I mean, eating less often, I think generally in our culture, we eat too often, you know, it's just everybody's eating, you know, from daybreak to, to in bed, you know, it just so often. And what I learned from reading Dr. Fung's book is it doesn't allow your body to do the things that it normally needs to do to keep you healthy. You, you just don't give it a break. And so the shrinking of the eating window is, is really helps, I think, not only with weight loss, but uh, with health. Um, uh, I would say fundamentally, I learned that our bodies are so amazing and so complex, and they pretty much know what to do. Mm. Uh, it's just if we would just leave them alone and not interfere with, with with feeding, you know, give it good fuel, give our bodies good fuel. It pretty much knows what to do uh, as far as healing or, or maintaining weight. Uh, like I said, giving it a break and not just overfeeding. Um, I just have a real deep appreciation for the for the. What's going on in our body? I mean, I've, I've been researching it, and it's just incredible. It's mind-blowing. Think for yourself. Make your own plan because there I have found so much what I consider very poor information uh, that's circulated and taught to us from the time we're a young age. And I'm talking about when I say information, I mean what's taught in schools and with mm -hmm. the government, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, dietary guidelines are not good. The uh, a lot of the recommendations from like the uh, agencies like uh, the diabetes or the heart association, it's almost like these associations are trying to keep people sick, you know, yeah. to sell drugs. I mean, I hate to sound cynical, but uh, anyway, I step back. I encourage people to think for yourself and maybe seek out different voices. I found there's a lot of there's kind of a kind of a underground <laughs> revolution going on. If you look in social media. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to have it now, you know, YouTube channels like yours or, or mine, uh, or Twitter or whatever. People are sharing stories one one on one like this. Hey, right. this is what I did. This is how I did it. You know, so the government didn't tell us what to say or what to do. I mean, we're just sharing this information. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's my story. It didn't involve any drugs uh, or or supplements. And I've. I emphasize that I don't take anything. I don't take any drugs, any supplements, any medicine. I'm and I'm completely healthy. I don't have any sign of diabetes or heart disease. Or nothing. I mean, I'm. It's like I was handed my life back. And, mm. and uh, I don't know. I get excited talking about it because I was sort of, you know, depressed and not real happy and resigned to uh, what I thought probably a short life. And here I am now. I'm, I'm running marathons and I'm just a much happier frame of mind. And um, I, I would just mention earlier, I said, you know, during that fast that I become very clear thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, that never did go away. I mean, that that's kind of stuck. And I think because of the dietary changes, I've been real sharp, real focused. I perform better at work. And uh, mm. 
just it, everything just working for me now in my life. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Oh, I think I think it does. That's uh, and actually there was an RN uh, in the comment section one time, and she basically said she thinks like it just doesn't make any sense to her the way the guidelines are written because it's like it's like they're trying to keep people sick. So it is interesting. It's not even just outsiders from the medical community you know it's just you know sometimes there's an undercurrent there i think too so oh, there is i see it on twitter there's plenty of doctors that realize this and there are there are there is some resistance from within the medical community uh but they they have to be very careful what they do and you know right. one of the one of the worst places you can be in in my opinion and for your health is in a hospital because <laughs> the food they give you is terrible it's nothing you know it's really don't just tr do everything you can to stay out of a hospital because that's not where you get well. It's real. I mean, you got to go there for treatment of some sort of an acute injury or whatever. But mm -hmm. wow, I mean, you look at the, a lot of doctors. What did I see the other day? Fifty percent of doctors are overweight. Mm -hmm, uh, right. Okay, so <laughs> where do we where do we take our cues from? Uh, the overweight right. doctor just prescribing certain medicines. Uh, Anyway, I, I hate to sound like a person wearing a tinfoil hat or conspiracies, but there's just, I think, a lot of not helpful information out there. And uh, that's kind of why I'm sharing my story, why I started my channel, is just to, just to say, well, one reason I did it is because, I mean, my weight loss story, there's a lot of successful weight loss stories out there if you look around. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But I, what I see is unique about mine a little bit is that, uh, I mean, I lost a lot of weight. I mean, I'm less than half the size I was. But also my age, taking that mm. into account, a lot of the weight loss stories are like people in their 30s or younger, you know. And I just would give advice to anybody young, uh, take care of it early because it doesn't get easier as you go on. It, it's more of a challenge as life goes on, your metabolism changes a little bit, you're losing a little muscle. So don't wait. Uh, but uh, But I also wanted to let people know if there's people out there, uh, like like in my age group or older, don't give up like I did. Don't be resigned. You actually, you know, there are ways forward. And uh, so that's why I'm not inclined normally to speak out a lot or to have a YouTube channel and make videos, but I decided to do it because I wanted to share. Uh, it, yeah. transformed, it transformed me so completely that I figured I got to tell people about this. Maybe it could help somebody. So. Right. That's exactly why I started mine, too. It's like maybe it will help yeah. one other person. So, well, is there any By question? Way, well, let, I'm sorry to interrupt, That's but okay. I just you mentioned your channel. I just want to not forget to compliment you for your channel and your story, which is awesome. I, I just get such pleasure uh, looking through your videos and, and seeing your story uh, oh. and the way you present yourself and your story and the way you help your your uh subscribers. It's really quite charming. And I got to commend you on doing a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you very Six much. Six Miles Supper. Uh, you know, I'm going to give that a plug uh, on, on my channel. But it's, it's well, really thank awesome. you. Yeah. So is there any question that I didn't ask you that I really, that you really wish I would have? Uh, um, oh, I have a, I have a comment and a question. If, if I could take a sure. moment here. Um, I mentioned uh, my diet, and I described uh, the balanced food with vegetables and whatever. That was, I made a drastic change from that. That was what took me, got off 90% of my weight over the 13 mm -hmm. months. But a year ago, uh, I was seeing a lot of people talking about this diet called a carnivore diet. Mm. And it, I was fascinated by it. A lot of people were talking about how it just, change them and how it, it a lot of people have just cured their bowel issues or skin issues or arthritis or autoimmune and I didn't have any of those issues but except people were talking about how it really helped with their skin and that intrigued me because I had some issues with the skin that I wasn't too happy about so I was kind of in a mode at that point like hey let's try some you know I was pretty confident and ready for a new challenge so I did like a 30-day test of this of a carnivore diet which what that means is uh, you're just basically eating meat. It could be as simple as eating meat and water. I'm mm -hmm. not quite that extreme, but I I, I eat meat uh, and sometimes some eggs. 
I don't eat plants anymore. That's not part. Of, I don't eat fruit and vegetables. I eat meat, and uh, sometimes sometimes I have an avocado, mm-hmm. but it, meat, cheese, maybe some eggs. And I I just wanted to mention that that's part of my channel is my weight loss, and I also talk about my carnivore diet. But it really has also on top of my weight loss had a profound effect on me. It took me. It's like it took me to the next level. And mm-hmm. I just, I, I found, oh, my skin became fantastic. I mean, I used to always have like dry uh, elbows and and, uh, and heels. And mm-hmm. I used to wait a bit of rosacea, which cleared up but oh. my mood, my mood, my energy, everything became real stable. And just, uh, I feel real uh, strong. My running improved. Um, one key thing. For some reason, it has an effect on your tolerance for the sun. I was a person that never really did well in the sun. I would just burn, you know, and I always avoided the sun. Mm-hmm. But I saw people talking about this tolerance for the sun. So this summer, I tried it, and it's amazing. I would, I became a, a sun worshiper, and I got, <laughs> and and that sun is so rejuvenating, and it's so, it's it, it's. I don't know. The sun, I just got such a charge out of the sun now uh, that I'm, I'm thinking to move somewhere where there's more sun because we're <laughs> not a lot of sun. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that I'm now, I've been less, I, I did a test on this carnivore diet and I'm, I've stuck with it. I've done it now a year. And it's oh, wow. A, so for a whole year. I've done it a year. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not 100% rigid on that. If circumstances come up, I, you know, I'll have some bread. I'll have whatever. I, I'm, I'm not tied down to, well, I'm only a carnivore. I can't do this or I can't do that. No. When I'm at home and I'm in charge of my food, I, I eat a certain way. But if I'm with other people or, or on vacation or whatever, I do some little deviations. But I'm 98% of the time, uh, I'm focused a lot on just beef and pork. And I got to tell you, Kale, it's wonderful. It's really <laughs> something. Um, a question. You know, it's funny. Last night on Twitter, I, I made a tweet uh, and I said, uh, I, I made a comment about OMAD. And one of my followers tweeted back to me and replied and said, hey, Jim, you don't look like you need to lose weight anymore. Why are you doing OMAD? And do you, I don't know if you get this question, but I thought that is a good question. Um, and and I don't know how you would answer, but my um I mean, maybe, I don't know if you're still trying to lose weight or you've got goals or not, but um, it, there's other benefits other than the, the, the weight. I mean, there's the simplicity. I mean, mm. it's so great to not have to think about preparing food in the morning or preparing a lunch or go out there. I mean, it just frees up time and right. month, and it's just, oh, I, I don't want to go back to the, and I'm not, I'm not hungry during the day. There's no, I don't have a compelling reason to add that meal back. Right. And I might add it in the big, as I was approaching my goal, I always thought, okay, when I get there, what do I do? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to go back to, mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do really. Once I got there, do I change my eating again? Do I eat more? Do I go back to three meals a day? I, I was really, really sort of nervous about that. And after I reached my goal, I was like, okay, what do I do now? You know, it's like, uh, how do I live? What do I eat? What do I do? I was, I was getting sort of really, uh, having some anxiety about it. Uh, but then it just went away when I realized I don't have to do anything. I do, do what feels good and do what I like. I like this. Why am I going to change? So, um, I answered that question, uh, that I like the simplicity. Uh, I like it that it's sort of, my maintenance, which I'm very, uh, uh, like I said, is utmost importance to me. It's almost automatic. I mean, eating once a day the way I eat, I don't, I don't think it's possible that I'm going to gain, you know, that I'm ever going to have a relapse and go off the wagon. It's just you can't eat that much on one meal a day. I mean, it's sort, of, it's sort of like a built-in maintenance. I just live my life, I enjoy it. I'm full every day. I have good energy. Uh, so why would I change? So, um, yes, that was a question I thought is, uh, you know, and and I don't know if you face that. I mean, do you ever think there might be a day when you would go off of OMAD? 
yeah, that, that is a question I get a lot. It's like, are you going to continue doing OMAD? And right now I'm still losing. I'm really just curious to see how far down this plan will take me before mm -hmm. it'll, you know, like I, it makes me laugh to think that it could get me down to a weight that's too low. It's like that's never been a problem for mm -hmm. me ever. So, uh, but right now I'm at a weight where I'm very, very happy, but I love OMAD. So I'm kind of like, unless I have to go back, then I think I'll just stay doing this. I, I really enjoy the flexibility of it and and the time savings. My goodness, I love it. <laughs> so, what I admire about your your journey, uh, what I picked up is that you were very patient. Uh, yeah. You know, you let it it seem to plateau sometimes, but you didn't you didn't make a big change. You just stuck with it, and then right. it, it kept on. You, and and, and and to me, to be honest, yeah, that's why I don't see it ever going back for you because you just let it ride. And I, I'm like you to an extent. I'm curious. Will I continue? Will I lose a few more pounds? Uh, you know, I, I'm 164 now. Maybe next year I might be 162 or 161 or 160. I don't know, but I'm not really worried about it, and I'm not trying to force it down. But I just know I'm comfortable, so I'm not going to rock the boat. And uh, right. I'm just going to go with what, what feels good, and I feel great. So, Jim, if people would like to connect with you, what's the best way that they can do that? Well, uh, I'd say two ways. Um, I'm active uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can uh, link to my Twitter. My handle is uh, JBC Derby, and okay. link to that. Uh, that's probably a good way to get me. Also, as I mentioned, I've got a... I've got a YouTube channel. It's called Beating Obesity. And uh, I, you know, I'm not real active. I do like a video every week or sometimes every two weeks. Uh, I just don't quite have the time to, you know, throw up a lot of content. And, uh, but uh, that, that's a good place. I, I like that experience. I just started it like last December and that's been a rewarding experience. And, and I built uh, some friendship and made some other connections about like minded people. And it's, it feels like a little community, and now I include you in my community. You know, it's uh, just people. I like that just regular people talking to other regular people about what you're doing. You can learn so much that way. I'd rather hear from a person that doesn't have an agenda or some some products they're selling or, you know, just people. People's stories are fascinating to me. So uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube and Twitter would be how to get a hold of me. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for being a part of this show and uh, for telling your story, which I think is incredible and incredibly inspiring. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kayla. I really enjoyed it.